not being able to hear, not quite like everybody else or like most people. It's kind of confusing. You're talking to people and you have to be really involved in every conversation that you have because you're just trying to make sure that you hear the right things. I'm 22 years old and I went to school at St. Michael's and I studied studio art and English with a minor in gender studies. I have never had hearing in my right ear. There's a problem in my, not my ear itself, but in my brain. The hearing receptors, just they just don't receive ever uh, and they never will. So I have been deaf my entire life. Uh, I never, I've never known what it's like to hear fully like uh, most able-bodied people do. We're here at the uh, Burlington City Arts Gallery on Church Street. I volunteer once a week. I've been volunteering here for a while, mostly honestly because it's fun. You get to talk to people and learn about art and in a way that's kind of external to your formal education. This is a model of one of my like larger light designs. You get a singular light source that's like moving through it. You can see this is kind of yellowish. In a blue light, it lights up. What you're seeing right here is waveforms of all the sound being made in the room. It's being picked up by a microphone in the room. You can see the waveforms of like my voice or like me clapping. These other devices that are in here are theremins. The Right to Sound project is an idea that started when I lost my hearing in July. I was just going to Red Rocks with some friends and we were all cliff jumping and I landed wrong and I went underwater and it hurt a lot and I didn't understand what was going on. When I came up, everything was quiet. I blew out my eardrum so uh, when I hit the water it just burst and I lost my hearing almost completely. Not being able to hear is surprising. You, you don't realize how much you need your hearing to interact with this world. It's scary because after about a year, you lose your memory of what it's like to even hear. You don't remember sound at all. Even, even after a week for me with having this warped hearing, I forgot what like, my friend's voices sounded like. I forgot what my own voice sounded like. I couldn't drive, I could, I was having a hard time walking around, I would just like get dizzy and like fall over. After about like a week of this, I stopped being able to like speak almost entirely and that's when I had to go to the doctors to get it immediately repaired. I don't have five grand so I can't afford this device, but I'm thinking in a larger scale, like what about like kids who lose their hearing, who aren't able to properly develop without this technology? If their parents don't have that money, then they don't get it. Or adults who lose their hearing and then all of a sudden their life is completely altered because they now have a disability and don't have any help to get this technology, that's unacceptable. So the Right to Sound project is a movement that I'd like to start to raise awareness about this problem so that hopefully we can get some political change to fix it. There are people who cannot hear and there is technology available to fix that and insurance companies are not supplying that and they are putting this price tag of $5,000 on it every time because they can. <laughs>